Hi, my name is Judy, and I'm a registrar for British Columbia's Small Claims Court. I work at the court registry, and my job is to help process the flow of documents required in small claims court cases. Hi, my name is Paul, and recently I won a decision in a small claims court. The judge ordered the defendant to pay me just over $12,000. Today, I'm here to talk to a court registrar to learn how I can finally get the money I deserve. So what do you say, Judy? How can I get paid? Well, Paul, the first step is to file the order. This means you have to put the judge's decision in writing and take it to the court registry so it can be signed by the court and then entered into the court records. You can find the payment order form in the form section of smallclaimsbc.ca. Filing the payment order is the first step to do before any other steps can be taken to either collect on the order or enforce the order. Collecting money is not the court's responsibility, but there are a number of procedures that can help you. So I have to write out what the judge ordered and then get the court to sign that order? That's right. You will use the trial record sheet that the judge completed and gave to both parties at the end of the trial. Write the terms onto the payment order and file it with the court. Okay, so once I file the payment order, what's the next step? The second step is to send a copy to the other party with a letter asking for payment. If the order includes information about the date, the payment must be made by or if it includes a payment schedule. Be sure to say that in your letter. This information will be on the payment order, but it is best to make the information clear. Be sure to include information about where payment is to be made and by what date. Payment will either be due immediately or according to a payment schedule. Your order will expire in 10 years, but I'm sure you don't want to wait that long to get paid. So make it clear when the payment is due. Okay, but you're making me nervous. I am going to get paid, right? Since you filed the claim in court, you were the claimant and the other party was the defendant. And then, since you were awarded money by the judge, you are now known as the creditor, and the defendant is now known as the debtor. So, in some cases, it might be easy to get the debtor to pay, but in other cases, you may never receive payment. It all depends on the debtor's financial circumstances, his or her desire to pay the debt, and by what actions you take to receive payment based on the information you know about your debtor. You mean even if the judge says, I won the case, I might not get paid? That's right. You could win the case, but never get payment. Wow, I had no idea. But still, that doesn't seem right. Is there something the judge can do? In small claims court, if you win your case and you feel like the debtor may not pay or may take a long time to pay, it is a good idea to ask the judge to talk to the debtor about agreeing to a payment schedule. This will specify the terms for repayment, and it then becomes part of the order. For example, the debtor may say that the full amount can be paid in 60 days, or that $500 will be paid every month until the debt is all paid. If the creditor agrees to the debtor's suggested terms, the judge will make the order and include an agreed-upon payment schedule. If the creditor cannot agree with the payment schedule, then the judge can do one of three things. First, the judge can order a payment hearing. This means that both the creditor and the debtor will appear again in court to discuss how the debtor will pay. In this case, the creditor cannot do anything to enforce the payment order until after the hearing. The debtor will be required to bring the documents to show his or her assets and debts. A statement of finances forms will need to be completed, which you can find on the smallclaimsbc.ca website. The second thing the judge could do is to order a payment schedule without the creditor's consent. If, for example, the judge feels that creditor is not being reasonable about allowing time for debtor to pay, the judge may write into the order a payment plan that is more in line with the debtor can pay. The third option the judge has 
is to not create a payment schedule at all. In this case, the debt is due to be paid immediately. You may then start enforcing the debt right away. Okay, I think I understand. But can you tell me more about a payment hearing? The purpose of the hearing is to give the court and the creditor information about the debtor's financial situation. The payment hearing also gives the debtor a chance to set a payment schedule that is realistic. So suppose the debtor pays me half of what he owes me, $6,000. But then, after months, he doesn't make any more payments. Would it be possible to get an order to have a payment hearing then? Yes, a payment hearing can be held any time before the debt is paid in full. Both the creditor or debtor can request a payment hearing. If a debtor has failed to pay as was previously agreed or ordered by the court, then the creditor can request a payment hearing. On the other hand, if the debtor's financial situation changes and he or she cannot meet the payment schedule, then the debtor could ask for a payment hearing. How do you ask for a payment hearing? If you find yourself in this situation, you can tell the court registrar that you want a payment hearing. The registrar would give you a summons to a payment hearing form to fill out and file with the registry. The court will then set a date for the hearing. What does a creditor or debtor need to do with the summons? Once the summons has been filed with the court, you will have to serve the debtor or creditor either personally or have someone serve the summons personally. You will need to know where to find the debtor or creditor. The notice has to be served on the other party at least seven days before the hearing and cannot be served outside the province. An affidavit of service forms needs to be completed and sworn. It will be given to the court if the other party does not show up. The summons to a payment hearing form and affidavit of service form can be found in the form section of smallclaimsbc.ca. What happens if the debtor does not attend? The debtor must attend the payment hearing. If a debtor receives a summons to appear in court and does not show up, he or she can be arrested. Does the creditor need to attend? If the creditor decides not to go, he or she should let the registry know or send a representative. The court can choose to hold the hearing in the creditor's absence, it may cancel the hearing, or it may set another date for it. Okay, so when I got to the hearing, do I present my case again? No, the judge will already have a copy of the order. At the payment hearing, the creditor should find out as much as possible about the debtor's financial situation. You will ask about the debtor's employment, monthly income, monthly expenses, bank account balances, and significant assets like cars or homes. Be sure to review the debtor's statement of finances form and ask questions about some of the informations if you are not sure. Debtors can be asked to confirm income and expenses. As a creditor, I bet that it's in my interest to have a payment schedule signed by the judge. That's right. If the debtor does not pay on time or pays less than the amount indicated, then the whole amount of the debt becomes immediately due. Sounds great. I'm curious though, can the payment schedule ever be changed? The court allows for changes in certain circumstances. A creditor or debtor can ask the court at any time for a payment hearing, whether or not there has already been one. The court can be asked to cancel or change a payment schedule. Like I said before, a payment hearing can be held any time before the debt is paid in full. So, what happens if we have a payment hearing and the debtor agrees to payment schedule, but then for some reason no payments are made? How would a creditor get paid if that happens? Well, unfortunately, Paul, that happens. In these circumstances, it may be possible for the creditor to try garnishment. By garnishing the debtor's wages or a bank account, the creditor may be able to receive money directly before the debtor gets it. The rules for this are strict and contained in the Court Order Enforcement Act. You may be interested to know, for example, 
that you can only garnish 30% of the debtor's net wages or salary after normal payroll deductions. Employment insurance and social assistance payments cannot be garnished, and if your debtor has dependents, that amount may be less. Just in case, how would a creditor be able to garnish the debtor's wages? There are several steps to take to garnish a debtor's wages. First, the creditor must prepare an affidavit that sets out the details of the court order, the amount the debtor owes the creditor, and the address. It must be in BC, where the debtor lives. You can obtain the form affidavit in support of garnishing order after judgment in the form section of this website. Then, the creditor must complete a garnishing order after judgment form and along with the affidavit, file this at the court registry. Court fees must be paid to swear the affidavit and to file the order. The registrar will review the documents and then sign the order and give it back. That signed order must then be served on the garnishee, the debtor's employer. The employer must then pay the amount specified on the garnishing order form to the court or dispute why they are not indebted. Finally, the creditor must serve the garnishing order after judgment and notice of payment out on the debtor and file an affidavit of service with the registry. Well, I hope I don't have to do that. It sounds complicated. There are specific steps to follow and they must all be done within a certain time frame. Plus, you have to be careful to get the exact legal name of the employer, the address, and the pay date. Of course, at this point, the creditor still hasn't been paid. The court has the money from the employer, and there is another process for the creditor to receive payment. Either the debtor can sign a consent form, or a notice of payment out form must be completed and serve on the debtor. If the debtor does not respond, then the creditor can produce proof of service and apply to the court for the money. Then, the creditor will be paid. As a creditor, you should also keep in mind that the debtor can always apply to the court to cancel the garnishment order on the basis of real financial hardship. If this happens, a new payment schedule will be ordered and any funds garnished may be returned. If garnishment doesn't work or isn't possible, what other options are there to collect money owed? Another possibility is the seizure and sale of the debtor's assets. The most common items seized are motor vehicles and shares in a company. It is difficult to seize household goods because they may be jointly owned and there are many exemptions. If the money owed by the debtor has not been paid, the creditor can ask the court bailiff to take personal possessions belonging to the debtor and sell them at public auction. This can be an expensive procedure, so the creditor should be sure to know the rules about exemptions and be sure that the debtor has assets worth taking. The exemptions can be seen on the back page of the order for seizure and sale form. Another option is registration against land, which is often called a lien. Your judgment can be registered against the title of any land owned by the debtor. This can be a most effective option as it will affect the owner's ability to sell or mortgage the land. In this case, the creditor will need to renew the registration every two years before the previous registration expires. A third option which does not involve the court is for the creditor to hire a collection agency to seek payment. In this case, the debtor's credit rating will be negatively affected until the debt is paid in full and even for some time after. The creditor typically pays for this service from the amount the collection agency is able to get from the debtor. Well, there certainly are quite a few options for creditors to receive payments from debtors. But is there a way for Kurtz to help without the creditor having to garnish wages, get the bailiff to seize assets, or hire a collection agency? Yes, there is. If the debtor has not made the payments agreed to at the payment hearing, the creditor can ask for a default hearing. 
the judge will ask the debtor why the payments were not made according to the payment schedule. The judge may adjust the order to a more suitable payment schedule, or if the judge feels that the debtor is showing contempt for the court order, may put the debtor in jail for 20 days. The debtor will still owe the money. If the debtor does not show up for this default hearing, he or she can be arrested if the person has been properly served with a summons to a default hearing form seven days prior. The options for receiving payment after a court order are explained in more detail in the small claims guide called Getting Results. Thank you, Judy. You have been really helpful. You're welcome, Paul. Good luck enforcing your court order.